stop jiggling that too? Sorry. Pull it out and have done with it, will ya? It's only loose enough yet. Salvage Company, you and your bird protection society. Yeah, that's right. So you won't get no more chance at stealing eggs. Now that we can slip aboard, we'll be watching all the time come nesting. A pack of brats like you aren't going to stop us doing anything. Just you try stealing any more eggs. You'll see. Yeah, that's told them. These kids are getting too cocky by half. Yeah, Dad giving them that reward for salvaging the Michaelette has gone right to their heads. They need taking down a peg or two. Tom Dudgeon. Good forever! And, and ever! You got the paint? Yes. That's good. Too late to paint the chimney today, but at least you can start first thing tomorrow. Stop it, Pete! What's up? Too close. He's been jiggling at it all day. I'm just about ready to knock it down his throat. I got problems coming from my mum when I out it. Hey, Bill. If you'd have told us that before, we're at out by now. Yeah, let's put a pincers to it. Just a minute. I know methods that always work, and it doesn't hurt at all. Open up. Right now, let's have it out. I think I'm going home. It's gone supper time. Kneel down. Look ahead and open wide. Remember, goods forever. Oh! Who's that? Must be someone down there. It's outed! Someone moving about. So did I. Here's that old brick. And there's my tooth. Still hanging on the end of the line. Cool. Ever so small, ain't he? Still worth threatens from your mum. What was that? I'm sure I closed that door very firmly when we came in. I know. I saw you. That means someone must have been down here while we were upstairs. There was definitely someone in my boat shed last night. Anything stole, Mr. Rodley? I don't think so. A lot of mess and a lock I've been broke into. Don't surprise me. Head word from April. Thieves been into a boat yard there, stole some property. Don't you worry. I'll find out who it is. Dad! One of our boats has gone missing. Uh, which one? The Invincible. from Mrs. Barrable. What? Our Norfolk holiday's off. Why? That brother of hers has broken his leg, so she'll have to spend the rest of the holiday looking after him, here in London. So that means you won't be seeing Tom and the twins? All the death and glories. I've got presents from my mum. Look!
was looking forward to seeing the children again. Now I have to spend the best two weeks of the year in the heart of London, gasping for air. Dick and Dot will be terribly disappointed. I know. Pity. Whoa. Still, it can't be helped. Now then, William, I want you to take good care of Tom whilst I'm away and not make undue demands upon his time, do you hear? Be good, kind and industrious. I'll take great care of him, Mrs. Barable. I know you will. You'd better get Rufus back to Norman. See you in a fortnight. Bye. Trot on. And who cast off the invincible lane? Go boil your head, George Alden. Truth hurts, don't it? We ain't never cast off no boat. Well, that ain't what Constable Ted would think. Fix it all up. Fix what up? Oh, how bang has this been going watching the fuel sets? Tom as well? Yeah, all of us. We've got to be there at three in the morning. Three? Yeah. We've got to go quite late. So it's not to start the eels. It'll soon be daylight, Harry. When are you going to lift the pod? Oh, tide's only on the tar now, boy. Give the ebb time to run. The eel's with it. We'll see. How long you been eeling, Harry? Seventy year ago on my birthday, I see him lifted fast. Seventy year ago, my old uncle, he let me sit along with him by the eel set. Same as yours, sitting along here. Well, put a hand with his old sets. You know, Pa? Yes. I've uh, been changing since then, boy. Weren't no houses in Potter in them days. Only the wind pumps. Weren't no yachts, hardly. Plenty of netting, striking for pike, and plenty of birds for the pot. What kind of birds? Not bitterns. I shot many a score of them, I have. But why? Then you shoot, that's why. You can't shoot bitterns. Why not? Old days, we shoot plenty. And that's why they've almost disappeared. Don't you believe it. You stand up for all them birds, young Tom. But you ain't never in your life gone hungry now, have you, boy? Truth now. No, but... No. Not when I first started healing, back in 1861, we was all so poor. We never know where the next meal were coming from, or if he were coming at all. We shot them bittens to eat, young Tom. We sell the eggs for cash to buy a powder and shot. Man, woman, child, we all starving. Wind of times I've known us eat rats. When you're starving, you take the fowls of the air and the fish of the sea, like the Lord God tell us to in his good book. Here they come. You boys, give me a hand. Hold the keep. Cool. What a lot. They're working, they're working, Barman. You take a couple of these 
Eels home to your mum, Tom. My mum loves Eels. We can smoke them and eat them for our tea. What boat's that? Salvage job. Must have drifted with the flood and caught in that tree. Someone must have water pretty careless. It's our good luck then. Prime salvage, that's what I call it. Look. No. Again, I guess you leave them walks alone. Two witnesses this time. He was tying her up, not casting her off. A likely story. Come on, George. Let's report him to Constable Teller right away. Caught in the act and Tom dudging in it, too. We didn't cast her off. We found her adrift with the walks hanging loose. The mast was stuck in a tree. I suppose you say you had nothing to do with all the others. I suppose you say you never touched the Rodley's rowing boat. All the houseboat, all the shooting star. You lot are in real trouble this time and you won't get away with it. Calm, Ralph. Oh, no. Don't worry. Harry can vouch that we were with him all night. Oh, that's true. Anyway, I'm off to bed. Good idea. Here's yours. Thanks. Bye. Bye. From. I don't know, but it has a horning postmark. Not more bad news. Well? Shh. Oh, come on. He's done it. He's fixed it all up. Who? Tom. He can go and stay with his parents. What? Mrs. Barrable told me all about her having to go and nurse her brother. And my parents are very happy for you to come and stay here, in our house, if you'd like to. Wonderful. When? As soon as we can get away. Mummy! Mummy! I tell you, I woke up in the middle of the night to find myself drifting down river. Oh, Our terrible. skiff was set adrift, and we found her caught on the chains of the ferry. Oh, I moored shooting star to Curly last night, and someone came and cast her adrift. Oh, what we want to know is what you're going to do. Hold about you it. hard, please. There they are. Them's the three. Them little devils. Oh, Hold you, you hard, I say. So. You've been at it again. And this morning you were seen casting off that yacht. Turn her up! Why'd you cast off our skiff? And what about my houseboat? You could have done 50 pounds worth of damage sending Shooting Star down river. Uh, we haven't touched none of them! There'll be no peace on this river till they're off it. All right, all right. Now then, where is you lad from midnight onwards? Catch Neil's with Harry Banger. A likely story. Show him, Joe. Could have got their meals anywhere, any time. Yeah. You've got to put a stop to his hooliganism. Something's got to be done to protect our property. Right. Listen, all of you. Now, these lads say they was with Harry Bangert when all this daftness was going on. Well, I'll have a word with Harry this afternoon, and then we shall know what's what. So clear off now. I want no more disturbances. Go on off with you. Go on. And if there's any more trouble, I'll come down on you so hard. You'll know it for a twelvemonth. <laughs> Take it to Norfolk. 
Here, then. Yes, but only if I promise to bring back pictures of all the Coop Club. Gosh. Shh. some bait. Good do. Penny of bait, puttons for a really good one, but no tiddlers. Be back late this afternoon. We'll settle up then. Right on. Young uh, Tom Dudgeon and the uh, Death and Glory boys say they was with you between midnight and dawn. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. That was, that was. What time did the tide turn? At three. Well, they wasn't lying on that score. They could have cast off those boats before they came to yours. Got a paper back in the spare, have you? I reckon them lads is good lads. I think the wall of wild birds and that. But boys is boys. Who knows what boys get up to when they're alone on the river? Half beach and holy nice eating. Good job you was late, Tom. Give us extra time to smoke them. They look jolly good. Terrible job we had getting them just right. Worth it though. As soon as that boat comes from space. We'll get going. Going where? We're emigrating. Not very popular around here. Right then. Not bad. A bit sooty. Try lots of salt. Eat up, Pete. Ain't you hungry? I think I'll wait a bit. Perhaps it's because they're not quite hot and not exactly cold. Some meals aren't as good as others. These aren't very good ones, that's all. Half a crown, all right? Don't mind. There we are. Thanks. Already slip, Pete. Be 
you off? Yes. No wind, worse luck. Still, we've got to get going. Well, I'm going to Potter Hyam and give you a tow if you want one. Yes, please. Don't forget Dick and Dot arrive tomorrow. Don't worry, we'll be back. Cheerio. Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Right, cast off forward, Bill. Tomorrow. We've got to go and see Dick and Dot. Yeah. Tell you something. That tedder, he can't patch nothing on us now. Not out here. He'll be up and down the Horning Reach, pestering somebody else for once. Yeah. <laughs> Surely you can't be a patient at this hour. I wouldn't bank on that. Mrs. Webb's baby's due. Tom, when you grow up, never ever become a country doctor. I'm thinking about the Navy, actually. Constable Tedder, what's a word with you, Tom? Now then, young fella, them pals of yours are in real trouble. So you better tell me right quick where they're now hiding up. What's happened? I'm asking the questions, boy. Do you know where they are? If you know, Tom, it's your duty to tell us. When I saw them this afternoon, they said they were going up to Potter Hyam. Potter? Well, that just about settled it, then. I oh, now got cast iron proof against him. your bait's out now. I'm off to the Roaring Donkey for some milk. Will you keep an eye on the ship and the line? Righto. Thanks. I'll be back in ten minutes or so. Can we go aboard? Of course you can. But don't disturb the fish and uh, better leave the line alone just in case. He's all right, he is. Cool. Look at that rod and line. on our way. I'll be afraid to have lots of new birds. I wonder if we'll be arriving in time for a new adventure. Something I can write another story about.
Held him and you played him. I'm not going to take over now. He's off again. Oh, heck. He's gone in the reeds. He'll snap the line. We'll have to drive him out. You scare him out of there, Pete. Go on, splash around a bit and get him moving. That's it. The beastly things have been happening, and everyone believes the death and glories are to blame. Why? We're seeing them this afternoon, aren't we? Yes, they're taking an awful risk. They're on the run, and the police are after them. Last roach. He must have been the terror of the river, that one. How heavy is he? Well, weigh him at the roaring donkey. Fortune of the roaring donkey, I'll give up in keeping the take of poultry farming. <laughs> now, do I pay you for him, sir? No, no, these are the lads who caught him. Are they? Oh, are you? Well, I'll tell you what I do, lads. I'll give it a shilling for every pound he weighs. And that makes. Um... 30 shillings and sixpence. Uh, <laughs> but, lads, keep it under your hats. This has got to be a big surprise. Not a word to anyone till he stopped in a case and in the snug of the roaring donkey. 
Then we'll have a big unveiling. Is it a bargain? It's a bargain. You can count on us. Word of honor. Come and get your money, boys. Thirty bob and a tanner. And all for us. That's more than some men earn in a whole week. And we can spend it on whatever we like. Dick and Dot will be here soon, and we can have a rope coot club party. Can't wait to tell them about that old pipe. No, we can't. We made a promise. So we did. Sitty, come on. Of course, the very first thing Dick and I wanted to do was to go sailing. Tom said he'd simply come along as a passenger and let us do all the sailing on our own, even the difficult bits. It was a great compliment. Luckily, I remembered our training from earlier in the year. Well, most of it. Dick was so busy looking at all the birds, he hardly said a word. I was so happy to be back on the broads again. I wanted to go on sailing forever. Hey, there's old Simon aboard the Taganet. Afternoon, Simon. Afternoon, lads. How long are you here for? Half tomorrow morning. That's good, Rope. Uh, wicked when it's new. You have to give it a good toe, yeah? Take all the viciousness out of it. Yeah. Well, I'm off. Yep. You keep an eye on the cigarette, will you? Don't want nobody larking about. No one will while we're around. But we won't be here for a while. We're going shopping at Mrs. Bramble's. I won't keep you a minute, my dears. Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Right Bramble. Right, there's enough here to keep the fleet going. Who's now paying for all this, then? Oh, we got the money. Plenty of it. Three gobstoppers, please. Have your ship come in, then? Yeah, we tied her up ten minutes ago. Shilling for five, six, seven, eight. Oh, no. <laughs> I only wish Paul and Starbuck could be with us. I know. But they have to stay in Paris right until the end of the holiday. What a shame. What's gone wrong, Bill? Nothing's gone wrong. Wait, can't you? We've been waiting. Oh, how yeah. about that? Oh, Just like Christmas. It looks lovely, Bill. Is that brandy you put on there? Of course it ain't brandy. They wouldn't sell me that. Not even one of them little old bottles. That's methylated spirits. It blows just as well. All you need is plenty of sugar to help it down. Burned beautifully. Of course it did. You need a fair drop of spirit to light it. You must have spent an awful lot of money on this feast. Someone had a birthday. Ah, oh, that'd be telling. We got cash money. We earn it. Any more ginger beer? You know who this is. I told you who was looking for you. We've got nothing to hide. Come in, Mr. Tedder, and mind your head. See. Party in it, it. It's you three I'm after. Tom told us you were looking for us, but we ain't worried. No, we ain't done nothing wrong. Where was you last night? Above the bridge at Potter. Ah. I know you was. How many boats did you cast loose? We never touched no boats. Somebody did. You was there. And damage was done. I'll be talking to you about it in the morning, after I've spoken with witnesses. The 
about to make ourselves scarce again. Well, you must admit it's rather odd. Wherever they go for the night, boats are unmoored. But they've been brought up to respect the Reverend its ways. They're both builders' sons. Look! It's a garnet. I'll take a photograph. But where are her crew? I can't see Simon or Jim Woodall. She's been cast adrift, Tom. She'll smash into something soon if we don't stop her. Oh, Tom knows what he's doing. Come on. Come on, come on, Good boy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on Tom. That's it. Good boy. Nearly there. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Well done, Tom. Jim Woodall will be pleased. If I catch the little varmints, Take my belt to them. I'll have the hides off their backs. It's no use raging, Jim. But I know how you feel. The thrashing them lads without proof won't do no good at all. And you'll end up in front of the magistrates yourself. Who else could it have been? They was moored next to ours last night, and this morning they're gone. And so was the Sagarnet. Listen, Jim. I seen both them ruins myself last night when I had a word with them boys. And I still can't believe us. Three bright lads with plenty of bad feeling already against them, I'd do anything as daft as to slip your moorings when they knew they was prime suspects already. Makes no sense at all. Badness. Pure badness. And if there's any more on it, I reckon that little old boat of theirs won't last the season out. What do you mean by that, Jim? I know what I mean. And so do plenty of other boat owners on this reach. If you can't do your job proper, there's folks mad enough and glad enough to do it for you. One way or the other. I passed off the cigarnet. Everybody knows he wouldn't do a thing like that. Especially Jim Woodall. Pete, it was Jim Woodall who accused you. What? We know you didn't do it. Of course we didn't. Jim Woodall's a friend of ours. Well, he ain't any more, is he? What time did you leave this morning? About 7.30. And was the Saganet still there? No. But Simon said they were off in the morning. We just thought he'd left early. I bet that Teddy's been round to my house by now. Yeah. I can just see my dad taking his belt off already. Come on. It's safe enough here at Ramworth. Look at all those boats along there. Every one of them moored securely. They won't go adrift by accident. And I'll bet that by tomorrow morning, Everything will be cleared up about the cigarnet. We ain't going back unless they have. I know it's easy for me to set, but try to stop worrying. Look, we'll meet again after breakfast tomorrow. Agreed? All right, then. See you tomorrow. Bye. Cheerio. Bye. 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 <laughs> Rob, how are you getting on? All right. The old boat's come along a fair tree, ain't she? Not bad. Wish I could go sailing. You're a coot, aren't you? Even if you are from foreign parts. Many coots are entitled to a bit of sailing. Why don't you come out with us tomorrow morning? Honest? Certain. I'm going sailing. <sighs> There's somebody who doesn't know what trouble's about.
I'm afraid it isn't. Not for some of you. Those three friends of theirs seem to have been up to something worse at Potterheim than casting off boats. Theft. Theft? Theft. Mr. Sonning of Potterheim telephoned me this morning. He was angry enough about his boats being cast off. But now he's discovered those young rascals have been into his boatyard and stolen a whole lot of gear. What kind of gear? He said something like 200 new gunmetal shackles are missing. Good Lord. They had nothing to do with that. How do you know? Joe! Constable Ted has already spoken to their parents. Where are the boys? Do you know? Tom? We've gone to Ramworth to be out of the way. So if any more boats are cast off, everybody will know it can't be them. Like it or not, those boys are innocent until proved guilty. I quite agree, Doctor. But in my book, I got all the proof I need. You know where they was last night, sir? Well, certainly, they made no secret of it. They were at Ramworth. Exactly. Ramworth. Not half an hour ago, I have a phone call from Jeremy Bush at Ramworth. He told me at least seven boats was cast loose last night. And this morning, he see them three boys getting away fast before he could catch them. What? Someone cast off half a dozen boats. And everyone thinks it was us. Emigrating ain't no good no more. Look, you know the feast you gave us the other night? Yes. Where did you get the money from? Nobody say we steal it. What are you getting at, Tom? You see, there's been a load of shackles stolen up at Potter. There's a reward out. 
They're not trying to blame that on us as well. You have spent a lot of money. People might start putting two and two together. Afternoon, Alfred. Afternoon, Betsy. Mrs. Hobbs. Your usual. Thank you. Excuse me, Mrs. Hobbs. Carry on with your brambles, sir. How are you getting on now with them thefts, Alfred? The skies is clearing. Tell me, Betsy, them three debt and glory boys, they been in here recently? What, Joe, Pete and Bill, you mean? Them as them. Why, they was in here not two evenings ago. Buying? Buying? A regular ship in order. What do you reckon they spend then? Oh, must have been ten shilling. No, more than ten shilling, near twelve. I say to them, who's paying for all this then? And they say, why? We've got the money. We've got it here. And blast they have. They never spent that sort of money here before, have they? No, never. Oh. Thank you, Betsy. You may have been very helpful. Afternoon, dear. Afternoon, Alfred. I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Hudson. Someone must be doing it on purpose. And they're trying to put the blame on you. They've succeeded. No one seems to be looking for anyone else. Why shouldn't we find out who's doing it? What do you mean? Why shouldn't we be detectives? Yes, catch the villain ourselves. We could use my camera. They always have one. What for? Photographing clues. And Willie will make a splendid bloodhound. But he ain't a bloodhound. Nothing like. Scotland Yard have their famous big five. So we'll become the big six. We need a headquarters to work from. The Coot Club shed in my garden. Scotland Yard of our own. I've always wanted to write a detective story. We can stay head up in the wilderness. That's ever so near your place, Tom. Nobody will ever think of looking for us there. Right. You best get to the wilderness straight away. We'll go to Ramworth and start looking for clues. <laughs> While the Death and Glory boys furtively rode upriver to their secret hideaway in the wilderness, the Scotland Yard Bloodhound led the remainder of the Big Six back to Ranworth. It's here that all the boats were cursed off, so it's here that we have to hunt for clues. Spread out and search really well. Trouble is, other people will have been here since, so the place will be full of footprints. A set of bicycle treads. You're right. It's a Dunlop. I know that pattern. Look, can you two follow the tire marks as far along as possible and keep a lookout for anything else that might be interesting? What are you going to do? Well, if this is the villain's tire mark, then I'll have to make a very careful sketch of it. Come here! What is it? A bicycle connector. It's all making sense. He came here last night, and judging by the tracks, he had a slow puncture. So, he propped his bike up against the tree and pumped up his tire. He must have mislaid the connector in the dark. He didn't hang around after casting off all those boats, so he left without it. You're a bit of a Sherlock Holmes. Come on, let's get back to Scotland Yard and tell the others. The black flags show all the places where boats have been cast off. How do we know boats ain't been cast off in other places? If they was, things would be a lot better for us. Right. Tomorrow we get all the coots to find out. What else? Clues And ever. We did jolly well for clues at Ramworth. It's because the detectives were on the spot at once. We found some tire treads and I've sketched them. And here's our big clue. Cool. So now we hunt the criminal. What have we got for supper then? There's them three perch you catch this afternoon. 
There's a little old tin of peaches. You boys! I want them shackles. And I want them now. We ain't got no shackles. Not now, maybe, but you know who'll buy them off you. You've been spending a lot of money recently. We earn it. Hey. Selling fish. What fish? Pike. We catch a whopper. Nobody eat pike nowadays. Who pay you for it? Catfishing. What's his name? We don't know. Where's he now? Gone off to Norwich. You expect me to believe a daft yarn like that? It's true. What you take me for, boy? All the world believed them guilty. The evidence was black on every side. With time running out and the shadow of the gallows looming over them, our brave detectives, with hope in their hearts, began their investigation. William, come on, boy, come on. <laughs> At Scotland Yard, a scientific comparison of bicycle tyres was in progress. Caring nothing for exhausted muscles from blistered hands, they travelled on to the remotest corners of the boards. Crossings were checked and double checked. But alas, nothing came to light. Everybody was concerned with but a single thought the flaming desire for truth. It was agreed by the detectives that whenever a likely witness was found, he was to be closely questioned. But often, in fear of their lives, these witnesses were too terrified to give vital evidence. And thus, it soon became clear to them that a conspiracy was afoot. Wherever they went, the detectives were now met with an increasing hostility. Right, you. Go on, stop it. No. So much so, that often Run physical away. violence was threatened. There was an ugly mood throughout the land. No one would talk to them, and doors were slammed in their faces. No! Even old and trusted friends no! now shunned their company. In spite of this, the work at Scotland Yard continued. Everything was painstakingly written down and recorded. Nevertheless, as time dragged on, it was becoming increasingly obvious that the Big Six were making little progress. The investigation was gradually grinding to a halt. Hello, Tom. Oh, hello. Hello, William. Look. Oh. Well, Tom, how did you get on today? No one wanted to help. They all thought we were the villains. Oh, no. Yes, it was a complete waste of time. And my legs are aching from all that cycling. Come on. Let's go back to the boat. Come on, Emily. Come on. Come on. Come on, Come on you lot.
doing on our boat? Let's go and look. William! Well done, William. Our Scotland Yard bloodhounds. Bloodhounds. If he'd only kept quiet, we would have seen who it was. I'll go get the stove lit. What exactly was he doing, Dot? He seemed to be leaning forward. It was as if he was sort of patting the chimney. Patting it? He was probably feeling the chimney to see if the fire was alight, to find out if the boys were at home. It was up to no good, else he wouldn't have run off. Which one of you lot bunged up the chimney? Bunged up with what? Shackles! Must be those stolen from Sonnings at Potter Hyam. What are we going to do? There's only one thing to do. Look at these, Mr. Taylor. What's all this, then? Shackles. New shackles. Brand new. Still grease. Right, then. Where's the rest on them? Evening, Mr. Bixby. Is that you, young chum? What can I do for you? If I wanted a new tire, could you recommend a Dunlop? There's nothing to beat a Dunlop, of course. Not that Palmer's ain't good, if you take my meaning. If you want to change. What about punctures? Oh, why, me old booty? Any tar will punch you to a nail go through him. But there ain't the punctures there used to be. Afore the roads was tarred, and you got thorns and nails from osses who's lying about the dust. <laughs> then there was plenty of punctures. That's jolly interesting, isn't it, Dick? Mm. Do you get many punctures to mend? Not too many, no. Any lately? Why, well, yes. I had one that were brought in day before yesterday. Dunlop tyres? Yes, they mostly use them. You wanting a new tyre, young Tom? Not just now. Just making inquiries. Hmm. You'll excuse me, I'm busy. Yes. Well, don't worry about that. It's got a sea of fetches a spike. It's got done up tyres. It hasn't got a pump on it. And it's had a puncture recently. Goodbye, Mr. Bixby. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. evening, Vicar. Evening. Hello, Tom. Boys. Ah, oh, well. Rome wasn't built in a day. It's Church of England. Why did the villain only put a few shackles down the chimney? Why not all of them? Likely he want the rest himself. To sell. No, he still wants to put the blame on you. So, he'll probably come back with some more. Only this time he'll tell Mr. Tedder where they are. Fingerprints. We must try and make him leave his fingerprints. Are you getting an idea, Dick? He was feeling the chimney to see if it was warm to find out if anyone was in the cabin. 
He'll do just the same when he comes again. And I bet that will be tonight. Go on, Dick. He'll come and fill the chimney. But that ain't gonna leave no fingerprints. It will if the paint is wet. Right. Come on, there's nothing more we can do here. We've set the trap and we mustn't scare him off. Let's get home. We'll meet back at Scotland Yard at half past nine. Agreed? Yes. 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 Come on, Pete! since you last asked that. We've been here just on half an hour. All right, Tom? It's bad news, I'm afraid. We see Ted has been around. Stirring up more trouble, old bet. He's been to see Mr. Sonning at Potter Hyam, where shackles did come from his boatyard. That's nothing new. We guessed that all along. Yes, but now Ted is certain that the death and glory is stolen. That Tedder. He could have put them shackles down our chimney. And he's got Dunlop tyres. Oh, oh, shut up, Pete. Anyway, I think we've been waiting here long enough. Let's go down to the boat and see if the villain's been. I hope they don't lynch people in Norfolk. Open the door and go in first, so it won't be us who find the shackles. <laughs> There's nothing there. Try further up the chimney. think so? Joe, don't shine your torch down the chimney. Mind the handprint. I ain't no fool. Too soon. I reckon the villain must have heard us coming and made a run for it. Better have a look on deck. There's nothing here. Nothing in the fore peak. Have you any luck down there, Bill? Nothing here. Must have scared him off. If only we'd waited another hour. Look here! Look here! Gee whiz! Yank them home and let's count them. No. Don't touch them. I need a photograph of them exactly where they are. You're 
Right. Must be at least a couple of score there. But what do we do with them? I ain't taking them to that old tedder to be told that we steal them. No, I'll tell my father about them tonight. Then first thing tomorrow, Dick can photograph them. At least we got his fingerprints. That's evidence. You're right, Pete. I reckon we can come out of hiding now. No need to emigrate no longer. I'm afraid it won't do. You've been very ingenious, but if you'll forgive me, all this evidence could have been manufactured by you. Come on, Dad. What about the fingerprints? It could be anyone's. I'm trying to see this objectively, the way the law sees it. Now, look, I'm sure Mr. Farland will examine any evidence you can come up with. You better be quick about it. I happen to know that Mr. Tedder is about to take out summonses against Joe Petenville. Now, say goodnight to your mother and get along to bed. All of you. Good night, Dad. Good night. Good night. Hey, look! There's the catch a lot. The fisherman can tell Tedder that we were telling the truth about the pike. Yeah, you're right, Pete. Watch out, here comes trouble. It's George Adden and that Ralph Strikey. Come out of hiding then, have you? There ain't much point as half the world know where we was. Anyway, we don't need to now. Oh, what? Never you mind. Where's the owner of that there boat? He's gone up to Norwich. But don't go getting any funny ideas, because we promised to keep an eye on it for him. This is the one chance we've been waiting for. How close to the catch lot are you all? About 200 yards, further up the bank. And I bet the villain knows that by now. That means he'll try casting her off tonight. So we've got to identify him. But how do we do that? Our word won't be good enough. A photograph, by flashlight. One of us hides in a bush with a camera close by the catch lot, while another hides in the long grass. But you ain't got a flashlight, have you? No. But I found a lot of powder, and I've been reading about taking photographs at night in the instruction book. What I really need to make is a thing called a flash pan. My mum's got a pan. <laughs> no, it's a kind of shield, really. Why do you need a shield? So that the flash won't shine in the lens. I see. So when the fella's casting off the catch a lot, the flash goes off and the picture's taken. Villain ain't gonna stand for that. I know. But look, if the flash is here and the camera's here, then the villain will chase the one with the flash. While he's doing that, the one with the camera will nip off with the evidence. Hmm. Yeah, good idea. How are you going to make this flash pan? I thought of that. I'll use this. I'll give you a hand. That's settled then. I think we shall need two hour watches. Dick can take the first, because it's his camera. And I'll take the flash, because I'm the fastest runner. Who comes next? Pete and Bill? Then Dot and me. We'll have to let off an awful lot of powder for the flash. I hope we don't burn somebody's hair off. It'll be a pretty big explosion. Gee whiz. Is that all right, Dick? Yes. Shh. As Tom and Dick's watch drew to an end, Dot and the Bloodhound waited patiently for them to report back to Scotland Yard. And at the Death and Glory boat, Pete and Bill prepared for their vigil. Come on then, Bill. Time for us to take over from Dick and Tom. Yeah, you better get going. Coots forever. Matty, come you here.
pretty close now. Better give the password. Hurry up! Doesn't take half an hour to get a pair of boots off. This way. Over here. Catch a lot. Come out of there. That sounds like George Houghton. Who's there? Mirror watchers. All's well here. We'll give you all's well. You clear off, will you? Leave us alone. We want to get to sleep. They've got the door locked. Will you come out? Better that door down in a minute. Got to get hold of that camera. Camera. Keep them talking. Give Pete time to get clear. Who are you? You'll know soon enough. Are you gonna open this door? Why? We ain't invited nobody. We'll break it in then. We've got to destroy that photograph.
watching for you by the catch a lot and we see you start the caster off that's all teddy was waiting for someone to catch you at it liar we'll tell him first we'll tell him now come on ralph are those rat boys poisonous hope that one is blast what a mess it'll take us hours to clear this lot up something worse if Pete didn't take that photo properly, old Tedder is bound to believe George Oden and not us. Something here. We certainly got something, Pete. Cool. We'll have to wash it and put it in the fixer. After that, it'll be safe to have a proper look. And if we ain't got nothing? And Dot's case will look pretty thin. You've argued that all this evidence ties George Auden. But, Miss Callum, this is circumstantial. No positive proof at all. And you've admitted that you don't like George Auden and that he doesn't like you. That doesn't prove anything. There was green paint on the shackles and green paint on George Auden's bicycle. He doesn't have a pump because I saw his bike this morning. And those fingerprints on the chimney are too big for any of ours. Come in. Thank you, Violet. Morning, sir. Morning, Constable. Over there, lad. We now brought two material witnesses, sir. This here is George Oden, and this one's Ralph. Uh, Strikey. All right, strikey, sir. And the purpose of their visit? An important statement to make. Very well. But first, I want Alden to fit his hand to the marks on this chimney. No need for that. I made it all right. How? Ralph and me was pretty certain these lads had been doing all the unmooring. And the other evening, we thought they'd be up to mischief. So we went along to their boat to see if they was in or out. And I felt the chimney to see if it was hot. And were they aboard? No, the chimney was cold. I see. Come in. Ah, come along in, boys, over here. Over here, Dick. Now then. What is this important statement you have to make? Last night, Ralph and me was on patrol, and we see these two lads cast off the cashelot from her moorings. He's lying, sir. We were there all right, but it wasn't us. These other two fellas did it. He would say that, wouldn't he? Now, you wait a minute, young man. If you wasn't doing no harm, why did you run away? I was trying to draw him away from Pete. What is all this? Was you there as well? Yes. Then how come you didn't see Pete pushing off the boat with Bill and Joe? He weren't there. Were you there? Yes. 
And what did you do when Bill ran away? Sit tight, like I'm told. Did you actually see Alden and Strakey pushing off the catch a lot? Well, not to know. But I did see two fellas doing it. Dark night, wasn't it? You had a torch, I suppose. Otherwise, you couldn't have seen them. Well, that great flare they made, you couldn't help seeing them. A flare? They lit a flare when they were pushing the boat off? Well, not exactly. But then if Pete was there, he must have been the one that let the flare off. That's how we see Bill pushing the boat out. What sort of flare was it? It was bright, like a photo flashlight. Did you light a flare? No, I did. But how could you light a flare when you were pushing off the catch a lot? I wasn't pushing her off. We saw you at it. Why did you light the flare? We were taking a photo of whoever was pushing off the catch a lot. They hadn't got a camera. How do you know? I took the photo, then ran off home. This morning, I give the camera to Dick, and he develop and print the photo. Yes, I think it's just about ready now. Come on. Stay right where you are. Constable? Well, I'm jiggered. That's Odin and Strikey. You two have a very great deal to answer for. I can start by answering a few questions right away. Well, what do you think of Mr. Tennant? Oh, I've never seen it. Ah, oh, it's marvellous. Don't think that yet. I reckon they'll come all over England to the Roaring Donkey just to take a look at that there old pike. In all my life, I never seen or caught anything like him. <laughs> well, go on, go and read what's on the case. <laughs> Go on. Tell him, Joe. This pike, weighing 30 and a half pound, was caught by Pete, Bill and Joe, the crew of the death and glory. Yeah. You didn't tell us anything about this. You could have told us. Why didn't you? Because they've been good lads. They promised to tell no one until that their pike was stuffed and ready for Sean. That's where we got our pocket money from. Shilling for every pound he won. <laughs> oh, you had me fooled, all right. <laughs> poor lads, poor lads, so young and with nothing more to live for. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Mr. Ted and the boys. I reckon this called for a drink. Ah, oh, you're looking a bit low there, Ben. <laughs>